Hi everyone, my name is Rose Polito and I'm the owner of Pixie and Ivy. I just wanted to share this cute little door hanger with you that I made last week. Her name is Sassy Chick and as you can see she has all the looks and all the attitude. So um, last week I decided to take photos of me painting her along the way and I put them in my iMovie Maker app on my iPhone and here's this about 20 minute movie that um, I hope y'all enjoy. So here I've started off with a piece of tracing paper. It's about 19 inches long and I got this at Hobby Lobby or you can get tracing pads on Amazon. I use a pencil just to run along the very base of the uh, wood cut out and I use my pencil at an angle so I'm running exactly around the wood cut out if you use your pencil straight up and down you're gonna get a wider line that does not line up exactly with your wood cut out so always make sure you're in an angle and you're actually touching the, the wood piece so once I remove my wood blank I'm left with all the outlines of the uh, wood piece and this is going to be really helpful when I go to transfer all the details uh, This will line up exactly with the size of your wood blank if you use your pencil at an angle and not straight up and down So my next step is to go ahead and sketch in all the uh, detail lines and get them just the way I want them so this is what's going to end up transferring over to your wood piece so be sure you like what you've sketched out so when you're doing your sketches um, make sure you have an eraser handy um, I tend to make a lot of mistakes until I get it the exact way I want it so um, yeah I always have an eraser So I've gone ahead and flipped over my tracing paper to where the back side is up. And now you're going to use a pencil to trace around the lines and these will be transferred to your wood blank when you're ready to do that. Here I'm using a charcoal pencil and the only reason I use this is because it produces really dark lines and that makes it easy for me to see, but definitely a pencil will work. So now I have finished tracing all my lines with my charcoal pencil and you can see exactly how dark they turned out, which is really nice for me. Like I said before, you can use a pencil and if you use a pencil, you're going to want to make sure your lines are really dark and thick. So when you transfer it over, you get a nice um, transfer of lead uh, that you can see. I just wanted to give y'all a little warning about charcoal pencils. They are very messy. As you can see here, I scribbled a little on the side and ran my finger over it and it smudges. So just beware that if you're gonna use a charcoal pencil, you're probably gonna end up with charcoal all over you. Uh, charcoal pencils can be found at any hobby store or even Amazon. Once I'm finished with the template, I set it aside so I don't get paint all over it. And then I start painting the edges and apparently my hands. And I like to paint the edges white. So when I'm using colored paint on the edges, when I do my wrap around, the colors are nice and vibrant. I also like to make sure the back is nice and clean for my customers who have glass doors so they're not looking at terrible messes on the back. So here's my first coat of paint, and you can actually tell it's not covering very well, which is totally fine, and this is exactly how it should look. It's just your first coat. Most of it is being absorbed into the wood, so this is just fine. So when I'm finished with my first coat, I'm usually very impatient, so I whip out my blow dryer. When you want to use your blow dryer, you want to make sure that you are moving your blow dryer constantly so the heat is not directed in just one area. 
you will actually cook your paint if you leave it in one area. So wave it around about eight to 10 inches above your project and it should dry pretty quickly if you've used a really thin layer of paint. So when my piece is nice and dry, I like to sand between every coat of base coat, primer coat, whatever you want to call it before I start my actual painting. So these are just a couple of examples of sanding blocks or sanding sponges. You can get these any hardware to, uh, store or even Walmart, but these are two examples of a coarse grit and a fine grit. So when I sand between coats, I always use the fine grit sanding sponge sanding block. Um, you don't ever want to use the coarse grit because that's actually going to scratch your project and uh, that's just not good. So I do use coarse grit when I'm sanding the edges just to get them nice and smooth so they will, you know, take the paint relatively well and you just have nice smooth edges. All of my pieces are cut out of MDF, which is medium density fiberboard, and it's a compressed wood. So it's not a wood that has wood grain. So when you go to sand, you can sand in any direction you'd like. Not like we've always been taught to sand with the grain. You can sand any way you like. When you're finished sanding, you'll want to dust this off or blow the dust off. And this is going to leave your wood piece like buttery smooth, which is excellent for painting. So now I'm ready to start my second coat. And as you can see here, you can tell the difference between the first coat, which is still kind of see-through, and the second coat is giving you uh, a more even coverage. So I finished up the second layer. When it was dry, I went ahead and sanded it again. Since this piece is mainly white, I added about four coats of white just to make sure I had really good coverage since, like I said, most of it is white and that's pretty much what you're gonna be seeing. So typically I do two coats of white, base coat, primer coat, whatever you wanna call it, and then all the colors on top. So you're not really seeing any of the base coat. So in this picture, I'm just showing you the transparency of the tracing paper. So in no way is this gonna be hard to line up because it is so transparent. And again, I get the tracing pads either at Hobby Lobby or on Amazon, just wherever I can find a better price. And they do come in various sizes and yes, I do have them all. So here I have flipped over my template to where the charcoal side is down and you wanna be sure not to move it around too much because like I said, the charcoal will smear and smudge. So you'll end up with a big mess on the back, but you can see that it was easy to line up and it all matches perfect. So now that my template is in place, I have one hand holding it down and I'm using a pencil in this situation, but you can also use a pen, a matte pencil, and actually I used my thumbnail just to scratch along all the lines and transfer them to the wood blank. So again, with holding the template down with one hand, with the other hand, I do a little peekaboo to make sure that the lines have all transferred over. A lot of times I do forget a spot and this way you can double check and mark any lines that you have forgotten. But be sure to hold it down in place or you'll have to realign it. So once all my lines are down, I go ahead and trace over it with a permanent marker using light pressure. If you press on a marker tip too hard, you're gonna end up with really fat lines and that's not what I want. I just want really light guidelines to help me stay within the lines and the dark black is easy for me to see. So make sure it's a permanent marker. So 
So as you can see, I have finished tracing all my charcoal lines and it looks kind of like a coloring book. I did have a few janky spots on here just because my hands were bothering me that night, but in the end, it's all gonna be okay. So if you have janky lines, it's all right. So here's my trusty dusty eraser again. I use it to erase all of the charcoal lines where my marker did not exactly line up. You wanna make sure you erase the lines because if paint hits it, it's gonna smear. So go over your whole piece, make sure all the charcoal lines or pencil lines even are removed. That way you're not gonna have any smears. So now that all the boring detail work is out of the way, the fun of painting begins. I have chosen a paintbrush that will fit inside the width of the glasses frame, and this looks like it's about a quarter of an inch wide. You can use this paintbrush on most areas of this piece. So the quarter inch paintbrush I chose was actually the perfect size for the glasses. Here I'm showing you that I paint my edges and I call it the wrap around. And I think it just adds to your door hanger or whatever piece you're making. It looks nice and clean and professional. So you might think this picture is upside down, but it actually isn't. I have it turned upside down so I can reach the area I'm trying to paint much easier. Uh, that saves a lot of reaching across and making mistakes because I can't see what I'm doing. So you always want to have your workpiece adjusted to how you're comfortable painting. So if you're intimidated by making polk dots with a paintbrush, I have an easy solution for you. Uh, these polka dots are really small, so I'm using a very small detailed brush with very little paint on the tip. And I start out by making a letter C. To finish off the polka dot, I just go around the opposite way and close it off. If you're really worried about painting on your piece, you can go ahead and practice on your tablecloth or on a piece of paper and just get comfortable before you paint on your piece. Um, my polka dots are not all the same size and that does not bother me in the slightest. This is a handmade project. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and fill this in. And again, I have very little paint on my paintbrush. Um, less is best, and if you need more, you can always add more. So here's my first coat, and as you can tell, it doesn't look all that great. Um, it looks very transparent and not opaque how I would like it to be. But I'm gonna add at least two more coats of white to fill these polka dots in and they're gonna look fabulous. So here they are all filled in three times and they look way better. So I just wanted to let y'all see that it does turn out okay. So during dry time, I didn't whip out my blow dryer. I decided to go ahead and break out the red and painted the wobbly gobblies, gobbly wobblies, whatever you call these on a chicken. And I'm gonna let that dry Red will also need several coats. There's just something about red that you'll need to apply several coats. So I actually forgot to paint her little hairdo on top. So I went ahead and painted that. And then I went ahead and painted her beak because her beak will also need several coats. Um, yellow is another color that 
you just have to add several coats. So be sure to let them dry between coats so you don't start peeling up the layer underneath. So now that her face is mainly painted, I went ahead and grabbed the marker that I used earlier and I went ahead and traced around all the same lines just to make it look nice and bold. And um, I will go in with the marker and actually put her eyes in. I'm not about to try to paint those little bitty eyes with a paintbrush. So anyway, I used a marker. So I put in her eyeballs and with the marker added, it really brings uh, your attention to all the details. So now I'm ready to add the white highlights. So I have a long detailed brush or detail brush and I thin down some white paint to make it flow really easy. And I go around and do some highlights. So now that her face is done and she's looking pretty good, I wanna add a few details to her uh, body. So this is an old scruffy paintbrush that I have and it's completely dry. I do not add any water to this. And I gently tap it to the surface of some paint and you can see here, I have very, very little paint on this, and this is how you want it. So once I have very little paint on my paintbrush, I want even less. So I'm going to scrub out most of the paint, probably 98% of the paint, onto a tablecloth or napkin, paper towel, whatever. I just want most of the paint gone. That way, when I go to add a few details, they're not going to be bold and you know, stand out very, very much at all. They're going to be nice and subtle. So this picture actually shows you how very little paint I have on my paintbrush. It looks like I don't have any at all, but there's plenty of paint in there and you'll see what I can do with it. As you can see here, I'm making very soft and subtle V marks on her chest to simulate feathers. And like I said, they're very soft, very subtle. They'll stay in the background, but you'll actually still see that the detail is there. And these are gonna be covered up by words eventually, so you don't want them competing with the words. You just want a nice little soft detail in the background. I also used this same technique to go around the wobbly gobblies, um, around her glasses, around the edge of her body and head. It just adds a little dimension to it and I think that looks really nice. I also didn't clean out my brush. I got very little white paint and I did the same technique on the gobbly wobblies and around her glasses again and just added a few more details. So here's Miss Sassy Chick all finished up and full of attitude. And you can actually see on the little gobbly wobblies that uh, white highlight I was talking about. And I think it looks really, really good. I'm really happy with how she turned out. I topped her off with a twine hanger and a red and white gingham check bow. So she's ready to go. And actually this little gal can have several sayings on her um, body. Um, just look up chickens and you can see lots of verbiage for her. I want to thank y'all for hanging with me through this and if you could do me a favor and please like my Facebook page, follow me on Instagram, uh, share this please with all your friends, put it on your page and just share, share, share and leave me a comment. Thank you. And with zero shame at all, I'm going to put in a plug for my daughter. She is a special education teacher in Houston, and this is her fifth year. She teaches grades first through fifth, and she has her hands full but loves her kids so, so much. She has opened a Teachers Pay Teachers account, and she has some fabulous resources in there to help teachers, preschool teachers, early childhood teachers, 
uh, special education teachers, even your own kids. If you need resources to work with your kids, check her out, please. She is the specialty teacher. Here is her name, so if y'all want to take it down, or I will put it down in the comments section with a link to her teacher pay, Teachers Pay Teachers account, and she also has a Facebook page, and you can also follow her on Instagram. She has some really cute videos up, and she does lots of freebies. Thanks!